Hello, Western Civ uh, 105 uh, class. Welcome to week three. Here we are moving along. And um, yes, uh, we have an exam already. It is a written exam. There's still a lot of work. I understand. Let me just say that summer courses are tough. Tough for me. They're tough for you guys. And um, I want you to hang in there. Keep communicating with me, those of you who are, when you get a little bit behind. Um, but it is what it is. We have to do three chapters a week. That's what comes with the summer course. Okay, so having said that, we are also covering a lot of interesting topics. And unfortunately, I'm not getting to do it um, to, to focus the way I want. So we're doing this vocabulary paper that I have also that's worth a lot of points on dealing with all these isms, socialism, communism, anarchism, Zionism, feminism, all that. And um, if you don't have the text, it's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge. Um, but I do cover all these things within the lectures. And I just wanna clarify something that it, it's still gonna make some of these topics vague. I tried, I actually put down, I, I used to, to have my own videos on discussing the difference between communism and socialism. And I went into a long, elaborate, I think drawn out uh, set of discussions that I'm not really quite sure are that helpful. Um, I think one of the things that I wanna remind you as you move forward in this, in this a little bit confusing section on this part, um, and it's something that I realized because by the way, when I made these lectures, um, I did not travel and spend time in Europe yet. And then um, two years ago, I spent three months in Europe. And I was two months in Leiden, Netherlands, um, next to Amsterdam, not too far from Amsterdam. And I had a lot more discussions with uh, European people on poli politics, political parties, and these terms. And I remember what really uh, struck with me is this Dutch guy said, you know, I always get confused when you Americans use the term liberal because liberal means right wing in Europe, uh, at least many of the Europe, not all the European uh, uh, parties, and, and in, ref in reference to economics. The reason is, is that we cover in the section classical liberalism, which really that term is used more consistently in a lot of other Western uh, cultures. Now, on the moral level, like on activities, like let's say, like a libertarian's views that, you know, that they're liberal on social views, but they don't want government intervention in the economy. So they don't want government in intervention into your life. And that could be can seen as liberal in modern American discourse, right? Um, you know, that if you want to support, let's say, gay marriage or transgender rights, that would be considered liberal in the United States. Um, but in Europe, liberal means liberalizing the economy, which means having less government intervention in the economy. And so when somebody is talking about liberal policies and they're, and they're talking about economics, they're talking about basically liberalizing or liberating the economy from the restraints of uh, government. So, um, which in America, that would be Republican. You'd be a conservative. Um, so that's where it got a little bit confusing. So, you know, when I was in, uh, uh, I was staying in Cambodia, I watched uh, Australian news all the time. And they just had the rise of the Liberal Party. And the Liberal Party sounded almost exactly like uh, the Republican Party's platform and a lot of the rhetoric coming out of them sounded a lot like Trump at the time. It's because they were almost the same politics, but they're called the Liberal Party in Australia and in America, and you know, I mean in the United States, that would just, you would be like with the Biden cabal, if you will, right? Okay, so, so there's that kind of confusion. The other thing is, is this, Europe has had socialist parties and communist parties participating in democracy with no disruption to their democracy for a long time. And so there might be an official that's elected that is uh, in the communist party, or they might have a prime minister that is a socialist. 
And just because they've elected the socialists doesn't mean that they have created a socialist society. And that gets a little bit confusing as well. So imagine if we have a Green Party person that ran for office and actually got elected. Their whole platform is environmentalism. It doesn't mean that they've transformed the entire country into uh, an environmentalist state. It just means that they won the election and that they're going to have some influence about environmentalism on, on the state, uh, perhaps. So what I'm just trying to say is that uh, in the United States, we have this ridiculous idea that, you know, if somebody like if Bernie Sanders would have got elected, we were going to turn into North Korea. And the fact of the matter is Bernie Sanders was considered normal, standard uh, left leftist politics in Europe. And in fact, I was told that Hillary Clinton, or like uh, basically the equivalent of a Biden polit political policy, would be considered right wing in Europe. Because over there, the socialist movement, the ideas of socialism has had a stronger influence than uh, the United States. Although they're not necessarily socialist. It's because they've been influenced. So like Denmark, heavily influenced by socialist ideas, it is not a socialist country. That's where people get confused. Um, uh, they have uh, paid maternity leave, um, universal health care. Uh, everybody gets health care, don't have to pay a bill on that, just paying your taxes. They have um, strong unions. Unions are the uh, a majority of the workforce in many European countries are unionized. Ours are only about 15%. There's no minimum wage in Denmark, but McDonald's workers make $20 an hour. How is that possible? Because their unions negotiate the wage, but now wait, they pay 40% in income tax. What? Now they're dropping down to the same kind of wage, uh, earn, earning wages that the average McDonald's workers does in America. But they have full health care, full child care uh, paid for if they have kids, and sick pay, and a lot of other workers' rights uh, uh, that they get with the 40%. Now, look. So it's a very different way of thinking about things. So just to say this, to, to back up for a second, um, when we're studying this textbook, we're learning about socialism and, and, and communism during the time that it was really more in book form than having been viewed in a, uh, in a wider range of historic, uh, uh, in a wider historic process. Um, so now, uh, uh, you know what it, I mean. China is uh, the largest communist party in the world, but it, it, they run a capitalist economy. Um, China does not fit a textbook version of Marxism. Neither does North Korea. Uh, by any, uh, okay, um, and they really go by a system called Juche. A whole other topic. My point is, is this: you're looking at the theories there on the ground, and I want you to just kind of see what the theories are of Marxism and the socialists and the anarchists, and I don't cover feminism as, as much as I would have liked to have, I should have done a better job about that, I'm sorry, but um, hopefully it'll be good enough. Um, Zionism is a part of the topic, I cover it uh, briefly, I'm actually, uh, my specialty is the Israel-Palestine conflict, which is a very complicated, uh, well, I don't think it's really complicated to understand. It, it draws a lot of, uh, most people don't care about it or they care about it so much that they have passionate beliefs about it. So it's a very delicate topic. When I teach in my 107 class, Israel-Palestine conflict, I try, try to have the, each student write both sides of the argument, even though I, I've come to my own understanding. Um, but again, I also want you to keep in mind that if you are familiar with the term uh, Zionism, whether you think it's positive or negative, you're still studying this from a time period where it's just more or less in theory more than it really has been in action as much as it is still on paper. So that's kind of what I want you to kind of realize about those things. And the reason why I don't introduce do fascism yet, because it's going to come out of these ideologies, but it's not from this time period. So I'm hoping that doing this paper is going to help you get a little bit more informed and think about these topics more. I would love to discuss them with you in person if you're having a hard time with them. Keep in mind, I work four days in a row at my other job, so I'll try to be available as much as possible. I do get busy, and I'm not going to be free again until 
Um, next Saturday, I'm going to try to grade some more this evening. I hope you're all doing well. Let's keep in touch and stay safe and keep cool. The weather is still pretty hot out there. Um, so, yes, we'll be in touch.